Okay, so we are going to talk about single layer perceptrons. And these are really just feed forward networks that have uh, no temporal dynamics. So they're not really represented by differential equations, they're just represented by nonlinear equations. So this is probably one of the simplest possible perceptrons you could write down, where Y is an output neuron that takes as inputs X1 and X2 and a bias, which we'll call uh, theta. All right, so um, why are these useful? Well. You can generalize single layer perceptrons to multi layer perceptrons, as we'll talk about in a second video. And um, this uh, picture on the left here is really a graphical representation of the function on the right, where um, each input in each layer is sort of represented by a neuron and uh, the, the transfer of inputs to subsequent layers are filtered through some nonlinearity. And this nonlinearity f can take the form of uh, a rectified linear function, as we've represented before. This is just the function, the max of x0. So f of x equals the max of x and 0. Um, it could be like a heavy side step function. So uh, h of x. Or it could be uh, what's called a sigmoid uh, because it has this sort of snake-like shape. And uh, there f of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the minus x. All right, and all of these have their advantages. Some of them, uh, a couple of them more simple Another of them uh, has nice continuity, and so it makes uh, training easier. So there's many things that you can train even just single uh, neuron uh, perceptrons to do. Uh, one of these is uh, logical operations, okay? And in our example, we're going to take um, all of our xj's to be either 0 or 1, false or true, and a couple of logical operations that um, you certainly use all the time, uh, even in daily speech, uh, but maybe you've never thought about as functions before, are the AND operations, where essentially the output of an AND is 0 if x1 equals 0 or x2 equals 0, and it's 1 if both x1 and x2 are equal to 0. Okay, And another of these logical operations is the OR. Sometimes it's represented by two vertical lines. And that is 0 if um, x1 and x2 are equal to 0. And it's equal to 1 if x1 equals 0 OR x2 equals 0. Okay, And there's also the not versions of these, so not x1 and x2 would be uh, 0 if x1 and x2 were equal to 1. Sorry, I realized I just made a little typo there. And uh, would be 1 otherwise. Okay, And uh, Made a little typo there, too. x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 1. Okay. So again, but overall, our, our two sort of main logical operations that we're talking about here <clears throat> are the AND, that is going to be 1, only if um, x1 and x2 are both 1, and the, whereas the OR will be 1 if uh, x1 equals 1 or x2 equals 1. Okay. So... An example of a 
perceptron, a single layer perceptron, implementing the AND operation. So single layer perceptron. We'll take the case where f of x equals the heavy side function. Okay. And so according to what we said before, our restrictions are that um, first of all, if neither x1 or x2 is 1, the output should be 0. Okay. So h of theta should be equal to 0 in this case. So if we look back at our um, formula from before, this is really just taking our formula for our perceptron, plugging in x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, and uh, we just get the nonlinearity acting on theta. In the case of an AND operation, this should give us 0. Okay. Similarly, for um, h of w1 plus theta, we should also get 0 for an AND operation, because only one of the inputs is 1. And uh, if uh, only x2 is 0, or is 1, then also we should get 0 in this case. And the only way we should get 1 is if both x1 and x2 are equal to 1. Okay, so how do we uh, satisfy uh, the, these restrictions uh, by, by tuning parameters? Well, one way is to note the inequalities that these all suggest. So first of all, actually let me, let me start with the easiest one first. First of all, we have that theta needs to be less than zero. Because if theta is less than zero, then h of theta will be equal to zero. Okay? There's many things that we can pick that would satisfy that. We also need that w1 plus theta is less than zero. And we also need that w2 plus theta is less than zero. And then finally, we need that w1 plus w2 plus theta is greater than zero. Okay. We see here, first of all, that there's sort of a symmetry in these conditions. So we can kind of start out by just saying, well, let's take w1 and w2 to be the same. So we only really have two parameters to, to tune. And then really the only thing, uh, uh, two things we need now are for, um, uh, well, theta, well, three things, because I got theta to be less than zero, w plus theta to be less than zero, and two w plus theta to be greater than zero. Okay, so let's just dive in and pick something for theta. If I pick theta to be equal to minus one, okay, then if I pick w basically to be anything between um, zero, but uh, less than 1, w plus theta will still be less than 0, okay? But remember, I need that um, 2w plus theta needs to be greater than 0. So I need w to be greater than 0.5, but less than 1. So let's just pick w to be 0.7, and in that case, we indeed have all our restrictions obeyed. Minus 1 is less than 0, okay? Uh, minus 0.3 is less than zero. That's these two conditions here. And um, 0.4 is greater than zero. That's this condition here. Okay? So we have our desired input-output relationship given by y is equal to 0.7 times x1 plus 0.7 times x2 minus 1. And that is our uh, AND perceptron. Okay, so that's an AND perceptron. All right, now what about um, the OR operation? Let's take another example. An OR operation. How are we going to set that up? Okay. 
Well, again, the approach, let's say we take uh, f of x equal h of x, in this case is really just to build out all our restrictions, okay? First of all, we need h of theta to be equal to zero, because if neither x1 nor x2 is, is on, uh, then we need the output to be zero. So this, of course, implies that theta is less than zero, okay? Just for the heck of it, let's take uh, theta to be equal to minus one again, in this case, okay? And we also need that h of w1 plus theta is equal to one. Now, because as long as one of the inputs is on, the output should be one. Same thing with uh, h of w2 plus theta, okay? And then h of w1 plus w2 plus theta is equal to one, okay? So how do we um, set up our perceptron so that um, all of these restrictions are satisfied? Well, because again, because there's this sort of symmetry in these conditions, you could sort of exchange x1 and x2 and all, all the conditions would be the same. We can sort of assume that uh, w, uh, w1 and w2 can just be the same in this case. So we just need a w that's just greater than 1. So that when we add it to uh, theta, we'll have w plus theta is greater than 0. Okay? Moreover, we need that 2w plus theta is greater than 0, but that would, that would follow from this condition. Okay? So, just uh, pick whatever we like. In this case, let's take uh, w to be 1.1. And so we get all of our restrictions satisfied, okay? We have minus 1 is less than 0. We have 0.1 is greater than 0. And we have 1.2 is greater than 0, okay? So our OR perceptron, in this case, is y equals h of 1.1 times x1 plus 1.1 times x2 minus 1. Okay, and that's our OR perceptron. And before we conclude, I really want to point something out here that these perceptrons are doing. Uh, that was made it sort of not hard for us to create this just with a single error perceptron. Essentially, these two operations really just require linear separability, okay? And just to demonstrate that, the AND operation, if we had what's called, sometimes called a truth table, okay, for um, x1 and x2 here, we had that when x1 and x2 were both 1, we got 1, but in any other case, we got zeros. You can see here that if we sort of draw a line through the space of possibilities of x1 and x2, we only need a single line, dividing line, to separate the zeros in our output uh, from the ones in our output. Same thing holds for the OR operation, okay? If we look at uh, x1 and x2, okay, one zero here, we see that um, if either x1 or x2 is one, we get a one, but if they're both zero, we get a zero. Again, we only need a single line through the space of x1 and x2 input possibilities to, to separate uh, the one outputs from the zero outputs, okay? And so we only need something that can do linear separability, and in fact, a single layer perceptron can only do these linearly separable tasks. If we needed to do something like draw multiple lines through here, we would need multiple layers. We need hidden layers. And that is why uh, in the next tutorial we'll talk about uh, multi-layer perceptrons, which are able to handle uh, those more complicated operations.